Today we're going to be reviewing the Relegura Center, Kisasa Library, which is a student design competition. Uh, I think it's in partnership with the United States. It's the Sustainability and Development Program by SMU, Hunt Institute for Engineering and Humanity, Global Development, and in Tanzania, it's Arthur University, University of Dar es Salaam, Mbeya University of Science and Technology. And we have a board from Herbert. And so we're going to be reviewing it in two steps. We're going to be looking at the uh, project objectives and then looking at the boards. And then we're going to be looking at the deliverables and then looking at the boards, at least for this section. If we wanted to go, if we want to go deeper, we can always do another one where we dive in. Yeah specifics yeah, so this, yeah i'm gonna start with the deliverables like the the big things concept sketches analysis ideas if we were the ones on the jury reviewing the project this is the first thing that you would look at are all the elements in there and we only see references and not really the ideas and all these references are things that people design from something so if you're going to imitate these then you're just basically kit bashing different bits of architecture to create something new so you don't see the idea. Site plan and section. There is a site plan, but it's not really a site plan. It's a building plan, floor plan, yeah. Because you don't really know where anything is on the site. And also in the 3D, you don't see anything of the surrounding area. This is what I, I mean by limited by the program. Like the 3D is very, it looks very isolated a yeah. bit in this like an scene as well yeah like you'd have to have a bit of context if you can get pictures of the actual area and i think this is just this happens a lot in i've seen a lot in projects at least in tanzania when they people do houses or buildings it's very isolated like they design the house or the building and then usually because of the program again that mm -hmm. you use it's just like green everywhere Where, whereas most of the land isn't so green <laughs> like this grass green yeah doesn't have like one tree standing in the background <laughs> of it yeah, so there's a need for contextualization. That's that's something that would probably needed to be added here. And then building plan, I think that was what was this was, yeah? Yeah, which just showcases the program. I would say it's a good thing to label the, the drawings within your panel or your, your presentation board. Yeah, and also um, some additional caption to it. Like to ex sort of explain, explain yeah. what, what it's trying to do also. Not just it is a, a building plan, but it shows the this and this. Like these are the energy areas or what other sustainable architecture you wanted to add. And then... Elevations. And perspectives and rendering, so... We do have elevations on the previous page, but it's not a... It's more of a 3D, so... There's just a lot of 3D renderings and not so many elevations, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. This, and this is just the general overview. Mm -hmm. uh, conceptual construction diagrams and materiality ideas and sketches. This is the big thing that's missing. And I think that's a big driver for such projects, like having the design thinking, like showing your design thinking process so that it doesn't yes. look like you literally took something from this project, stuck it with something from another project, and then you made something out of that. Mm -hmm. And, and it's also the sense. first page that you want to look at. After you yeah. show a nice 3D image of your design, try to explain what is the concept and the vision, then showcase kind of the clear floor plans and elevations, then add some more nice 3Ds to show the context and only end with the references because that's basically only showcases the materials and not the, the design process. Just looking at this image, for example, this here is, it's this. Yeah. So it, it does and it does end up looking like it's just, you know, like copied a concept and pasted it on another um, mm. on another. But the reason yeah. behind would then be like, why did you do the why did you do the steps the way you did? Yeah, because I think in that example, it's done because of the difference in height and topography and to make that more visible. And there's no topography in this specific design. Yes, so that's the thing to, to think about. Like it's not it's not just about red bricks and long windows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they're not just looking for the aesthetic. Like, oh does your does your design look like these um African architecture kind of designs? It's more about the thinking behind. So I think that's something yeah, to also Especially be. in these projects that are not that are not going to be built, but are just to uh get more ideas of new architectural design ideas it's way more about the concept and and how that can translate into a building yeah you don't want to be like re replicating what has already been done as yeah. much as you want to be creating something new now we can go to the 
project objectives. They, and they put a lot of objectives. I find it too much, too many objectives. But I mean, we're not here to criticize their. Uh... I guess if it's, uh, I guess when it's, uh, when it's not a real project, you are able to do this. Like I'm just gonna have nine criteria to to think about. Yeah. But I guess if it, you're actually building it, you try to make it efficient so that you're not trying to do too much unless and you have clear the budget. also. Just say yeah. that you have three objectives. Would be enough already. Develop and test building techniques that utilize local materials and skills. Buildings will be efficient, durable, and resilient. With this image, I think when people see a lot of this red brick, if you don't do your research, you might end up just proposing something that might not actually work for for the site. Mm -hmm. It might also not be sustainable or locally sourced, what they are asking for here. The, the site is in Mwanza, so you'd want to see if in... Kasisa in Mwanza, there is red earth. Is red earth the predominant type of earth? And if it is, then are red bricks readily available? Are they close by? And then you'd say that now, then I would recommend. Like maybe you could mm. find that these, these bricks were made from this earth. Maybe the, the earth that was excavated, then you can, you can propose such things. But if you just look at this and like, oh, it's bricks, I'm just going to propose burnt bricks without thinking... Where are they located? How far do I have to travel to acquire these red bricks? Are normal blocks just more readily available? Then that will become more of a local material than the red bricks, depending on, on where you are. That's a question that I would have for that, for this design, because I don't know if this red was from the site or from these images. Mm -hmm. And then what's the next one? Energy efficiency, renewable energy, things about energy. Well, in this, the pages that we are seeing, the boards, it doesn't say anything about energy, no. um, but we can already see a lot of glass windows, yeah. little shading, which means you probably need to have like ACs and things like that, which means it's not so energy efficient. Yeah. And I think there's a question here to be asked as well. Like these windows have a veranda. Mm. These ones do not. Yeah. And then this roof here is raised. So I would, I, sh I would think that if you were to have surfaces like this, it's because this side is not facing the sun directly. Like this yeah. would probably be the um, north, south, north or south, south face, but then you have a veranda here, which then means like this is the side that is getting sun. Hmm. So there's like that conflict of uh, like which side, which side is, is the side that you're trying to shade and which, which side is not because it's, when you have an, a raised roof like this with other openings at the top and big openings on the side, you would assume, oh, it's because the sun is, uh, this is the west, I mean, for Tanzania, this is the south or north facing side, so you can have these big openings. But then right next to it, you place a veranda, which means if this is that side, you're reducing the little light that's already coming into these windows. Yeah. So that's something to think about. And even um, the placement of the windows, like there is, like you can see here. Besides that, it's quite random. Yeah, I think this is the challenge, like I was saying, with the people um, following the program. So you draw, like you draw with whatever Archicad gives you. That's where you have mm. like these windows on this side, and then you have these windows on this side, and then you have you like you have like three yeah. different types of windows. And then when you start thinking about cost effectiveness, you think about the material you're going to use. Are you going to recommend um, mm. PVC windows? Is it going to be aluminium? Is it going to be wood? Yeah, and also if you look at the details of the windows, like they're not aligned really to each other. Yeah. In yeah. this left part, like the top is on different heights. What you oh, were yeah. saying is different sort of windows. Yeah. yeah. And then on this right image, you see that the the on the 3D on the right, you see that these windows are kind of inside the building, whereas on the other side, they're right on the facade. There's just a lot of different styles of how the win windows are doing. Yeah, which is also different again. And I think th that's why it's important to understand even the projects or the references that you use. Because I think these, like what I know for, from this building, I think this is a Francis Kerr's uh, school in Gando. Because of where it is located and the, the way it was built and the need for ventilation, that's why it became the way it was. There was the walls also play a structural role in, in terms of thickness. And, uh, and that is where the windows are placed, where they're placed. So if you don't know those things and you just think they did it for, you know, just because it was like, oh, let's just play around with the wall. Then you end up imitating it without understanding 
why yeah. like when I when I did a a summer school and we built something similar we had almost similar shapes but it was just due to structure where we needed some walls to be thicker because we couldn't use concrete beams and so the walls that were thicker on the edges would protrude and then you have that this effect like of a niche because the wall that is protruding part of it is structural and then part of it is just in line with the rest of the wall but if you are not aware of that fact and you design from seeing just like oh this looks beautiful I'm going to adopt that I think that's when you end up with such things where there's like a mix of um, yeah a mix of styles and then you also end up with stuff like this I think here hmm like little corners where now the 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 design is like strangely um, aligned yeah. yeah and then in terms of sus- like new sustainable things like energy or water mm-hmm. or these things there's nothing in this building I, I'm seeing some, well, I don't know what these are here on the 3D, these three, one, two, three. I thought it was just like stones, footpaths. Oh, yeah. Another item that I don't understand is that the 3D on the third page looks larger than this one. It looks like a different building. Oh, it's an alternative. Oh, yeah, this is an alternative. But I feel there's also a lot of emphasis on the form, like how it's going to look and there's not enough, like it doesn't respond to... Yeah, why to, is this an alternative, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't also respond to the need. And re- like if you look at these, um, all of like sustainable energy efficiency, renewable energy, clean water, sanitation, it's like all of these things are sort of missing. And it's like you just, you're like representing a shell, like, hmm. like a lot of emphasis is put on where to put the windows, you know, Stepping this out, putting a lot of fancy things, but it's not necessarily yeah. like it's not necessarily hitting the goals. And even if you look at the examples that are here, yes, they do look pretty. But if again, like I was saying, if you go and research the projects, not just take the pictures, but like look at the project, who built it, how was it built, construction drawings, how did it respond to the site? There is so much more than just the shape of the building. Yeah, you could have just even a, you could basically have a box or even just a plain surface or even a hut but what matters is does it meet the requirements or the specifications or the things that were listed as um things to pay attention to Mm -hmm. i mean you can probably make it work you can probably explain why this is the way it is and maybe because that is missing it's why we are unable to figure that out but i think there's work that can go in there for sure open share best sustainable culture practices yeah i think we mentioned them there's nothing of this explained in it and sometimes it's also difficult to show it in the building or the floor plans itself but you can explain it by using diagrams or just text to say how it responds to it yeah and i was gonna say if you look at this what is this they put here uh for a two pdf sheets that can be shared digitally minimum drawing requirements so i would say at least one of these a4s is your concept sketches Mm-hmm. And maybe uh, another A4 can have the elevations, the... The technical drawings. Obviously not like the ones that you find in offices, but architectural technical drawings, but that that help elaborate the entire... Um, Concept. Concepts and hits all the guidelines and stuff like that, like mm-hmm. they're saying. And then a, a third one, you could have your renders. Yeah. The, the last one. one. Mm-hmm. No, you go. I was going to say you can even have two that are dedicated to development of your idea from the concept mm-hmm. to... The final, and then you have one for the technical uh, drawings and one like for renders and not just fancy renders, but like renders that are showing application that include the different things that are happening. So like if you look at this one that we have, there's no people. It could be a library. It could be a hospital. It could be a guest house. You know what I mean? It could be anything, yeah. actually. It's better to have two good ones than show six yeah. that aren't explaining anything. It could be on a golf course as well, like you're saying. <laughs> but yeah. with this... You, with with even one, you can even have one panel that is just one render, not even like many, just one render that shows the, all the activities. Coming from the University myself, this was such a trend where you have like 10 renders of the same building. Yeah. But then when you go and look at other, other projects, it's like either the renders would be showing something that is worth showing. You won't have three renders that are basically showing the same thing, unless that is yeah. what's been specified. But then that's not... And really also, even if you're showing so many, then please look at how the images are aligned with each other because right now it looks a little bit messy like placement on the site and i would on every page add a little bit of a description some text some titles what what is showing and instead of 
writing simple proposals just make it more catchy and say like well this is the building or i don't know what the name is of the building but mm, i think it's a library but um i think other than that as it is now if you were to submit this as it is now it probably wouldn't make it doesn't even answer to the deliverables so just as simple as that they can say well no it doesn't count and then yeah. this reference one is more or less not needed because these are all mm -hmm. things that are already online like if all these references were if there were images of the actual site that is a different scenario because those are specific to the site but yeah. all of these references are things that are already existing online yeah. so you but don't you need can use references them. though it's more that you can use it to show this is the type of material that we want to use or this is a sustainability idea that we also want to adopt and not this is the exact shape or this is, yeah. When you have references, they should be, like Franka said, for, for use that is practical to the project. Like, I need this reference because this is the material we are going for. Or this is the building organization. Or this is the type of bond that the bricks are going to be using. Mm -hmm. If you're just going to say, you see this building? Well, take half of this building, put it here. Come and take these stairs, put it here. Come and take uh, these windows, <laughs> put them here then you're, you're, I think you're doing the thing where you're kit bashing. You're taking little, little bits of different things, putting them together to create something. And I don't think that is what this um, program was saying no. because it, it talks about... Innovative ideas linking to the site. Innovative ideas and technologies to support sustainable growth and livelihoods within Kasisa Village. So if an innovative, I think it's something that is like new, creative, something yeah. that is... Another item that I was just reading, can you go to the yeah. page again? It says innovative ideas and technologies. And I don't see any sort of technology showcased in this item. Yeah. This doesn't mean that you need to think about new ideas, but, you know, water storage or water, how do you call it, filtration or some sort of... Like you could even say that the entire ground floor is probably a tank, like a water tank built in the, on subsurface. Mm -hmm. And then you have a you have a slab for the foundation. Then you build a project. That's already you're already showing how you can use the the space that's beneath the building. Yeah. And yeah. then you have like a water system. So that that could be like an example of a thing you can develop. You can do yeah. um, compost toilets or some yeah. other waste. Uh, how do you call it? Waste. Waste management. Waste management. Or s certain ways to get energy, so solar panels. But maybe you integrate a new, yeah, solar energy system uh, that can be used for the light. And then you 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 can do research and and maybe say in Wanza there is a company called this that provides this, and if we to yeah. use them, they would. You we know, can easily like get that. to them, and they can put yeah. it in this building. Yeah, or you can say that I'm gonna use Red Brick for example, and it's not located in Wanza, but we did find. A women's co cooperative, and they make these bricks, and their uh, manufacturing system is movable, is mobile. So by employing them, we are creating jobs, we are building skills. You know, that is when you're you're now being innovative and making sure that such a project, if it were to be replicated elsewhere, it doesn't just result into a finished building, but results to a mm -hmm. finished building, newly trained builders with new skills to do something else. So little things like that, but you cannot easily show them by just putting renders. And then, yeah, submitting. Because even me and you, we have barely even looked at, like, like the, the space. Yeah, yeah, because from the deliverables, it doesn't seem like it's... it's the interior is very important. Yeah, the interior yeah. is... It is and if you, if you do everything, I believe, if you do everything in the program right, the interior will be the result. Hmm. Like, if you provide all the things, if you're able to do new technologies and, you know... Uh, let's, let's go through their list again. Uh, sustainable and... Durable buildings, energy efficient, renewable energy. You you incorporate sustainable culture and aquaculture, healthcare, education, training. Like you look at all these the things that they have mentioned, and you you try to work with them. You will end up with an interesting interior. But if your goal is I want to create a look, you end up uh, just going over all the things that are actually necessary. What do you think? It's good. Yeah. 